Fernando Cuadrado S. Inertia Uruguay. The 1986 explosion at the Chernobyl plant in Ukraine was the worst accident ever at a nuclear power facility. The plant used a type of reactor known as the RBMK-1000. In the reactor core, uranium fuel rods produced a self-sustaining fission reaction that could create up to 3200 megawatts of thermal energy. Heat in the core turned water from the cooling system to steam, which powered the turbines. An unusual accumulation of steam around the fuel rods could quickly increase the nuclear reaction to dangerously high levels. Clusters of control rods were lowered into the core to slow the reaction, or raised to increase it. These rods had tips made of graphite, which caused the reaction to increase slightly as they entered the core. Graphite blocks placed between the fuel rods were also used to moderate the nuclear reaction. At midnight on April 26, 1986, the number four reactor was scheduled for a partial shutdown. The operators were to test whether the turbines would continue to produce enough electricity to run the cooling pumps and other emergency systems in the event of a loss of the main power supply. The less experienced night shift was unaware that the design of the reactor made it unstable and difficult to control below 700 megawatts. They started the test by slowly reducing power to about 500 megawatts using an automatic system to lower control rods into the reactor. Due to an operator mistake or a failure of the automatic system, the power level suddenly dropped to around 30 megawatts, making it difficult to sustain the fission reaction. Startled by the loss in power, the operators violated safety procedures and removed nearly all of the control rods to restore power. Reactor power appeared to slowly increase to 200 megawatts. At the same time, the instability of the reactor forced the operators to take manual control of the cooling system and to shut down a number of automatic warning systems in order to continue the test. The operators did not know that steam was starting to form in the lower part of the core, making the reactor even harder to control. Returning to the test procedure, the operator shut down steam to the single operating turbine generator. As the generator slowed, so did the cooling pumps. Inside the core, a buildup of steam was rapidly increasing the fission reaction. This generated yet more steam, which in turn generated more power. The reaction was now out of control. Following an emergency shutdown procedure, the operators began lowering all the control rods into the reactor to stop the nuclear reaction. But as the rods were lowered, the graphite tips briefly increased the reaction and intensified it at the bottom of the core. Power instantly rose to 100 times the level for which the reactor was designed. The intense heat began to break up the fuel rods at the bottom of the core. Exactly what happened next is not clear, but there were two recorded explosions. Probably a steam explosion first blew off the lid of the reactor. Air entering the reactor mixed with hydrogen from the superheated steam and vapor from the overheated graphite blocks to create a second, bigger explosion. The graphite blocks also caught fire and the smoke sent radioactive particles from the damaged reactor into the atmosphere. What was left of the core continued to heat, melting the lower parts of the building into a lava-like substance. The fires took about two weeks to put out. A concrete containment building called the sarcophagus was constructed over the reactor site to prevent additional radioactive materials from escaping. Serious questions still remain, not only about the containment of the radioactive debris, but about the safety of the remaining three RBMK-1000 reactors on the site.
Fernando Cuadrado Esenosha Uruguay.